young and digital Mr. Dayanadi Maran. How does it look for the DMK this election? Uh, you have been embattled by a lot of allegations against the party. There has been a family feud which has been playing out in public. How do you think the DMK is going to fare this election? I think uh, if you really consider this 2014 uh, MP election, I'll say DMK is in a poised in a very good position. If our, basically, the fight is between the two major Dravidian parties, the DMK and the ADMK. Why ADMK has lost out all its allies and seem to be standing all alone. Whereas DMK is ensured to keep most of its allies. It has also ensured the minorities are all intact and are supporting the DMK. Along with the, most of the parties which represent the Dalit community both in south, southern part and northern, northern part of Tamil Nadu. I feel that the DMK is poised to repeat the 2004 MP election where we really got 40 out of 40 seats in the parliament segment, including the Pondicherry one. Yeah, because it looks very, that we are heading towards that direction. What about the NDA factor? They have got so many of the uh, local parties like the MDMK, the PMK and others. How do you think that will uh, really play out in Tamil Nadu? See, uh, unfortunately, uh, the power. NDA is as aligned with parties which have lost their vote base a long time back. But they have the DMDK. So DMDK is also a party which is vote base is withering every day. Because DMDK, for earlier student, when they started earlier, they were quite strong. But soon they realized that the leader could not perform as an opposition leader for the last three years in Tamil Nadu. And he was totally in exile. He hardly came to the assembly or represented any people's problem. And he was not able to even raise a single issue of the public. In fact, DMK had lost the election in 2011 and we did badly. We never even were able to get, be the major opposition. But DMK was the actual opposition in the uh, uh, state. And whereas the real opposition was uh, sleeping. And Mr. Vijay Khan never took such active roles in to come out to them. And it shows that party has withered. And today he has gone and aligned with the uh, NDA. But with, with whom? With other parties which do not bring anything to the table. So it is not that these parties are going to make any difference. And let me be very honest, BJP is not uh, performed, uh, has got any vote share in Tamil Nadu. But they have their vote share in certain seats. So at least three or four seats for the NDA now looks possible. No, it's not at all. Because one thing is this, even if you take the 2009 election, it shows that most of all of the candidates lost their deposits. They were not even able to get that uh, vote share. Mm -hmm. So I will not say that suddenly things have changed. See, basically, in, the, in his C party, uh, BJP has never been active. BJP stand on all the issues have been different. It came to the Kaveri water, the BJP took a different stand when they were the ruling party in Karnataka. They went totally against the interest of Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. And even say the Samantar project, the BJP never wanted to support it. B, BJP took the uh, other route and saying that is the uh, bridge of uh, Rama and they should say the Samantar should be stalled. See, this has hurt the sentiments of the people. Even the Sri Lankan issue, the BJP has not taken an out, outspoken stand in supporting the Sri Lankan Tamil issues. So the BJP stand on issues like Setu Samudram, etc. In a post-poll scenario, will that actually stop the DMK from thinking of aligning with the NDA? No, we have been very, very categorical. My leader has very stated openly that we will not be part of the NDA. We want a secular front and we will support whichever government, which forms, which is secular, not NDA and which will ensure that they will look into the uh, needs of Tamil Nadu and the needs of Tamil people, which is clearly spelt out in the manifesto. Coming to the manifesto of the DMK, uh, some of the things in the DMK manifesto could be considered as controversial. For example, you all have asked for reservation in the private sector. There is this whole debate of merit versus reservation. So why is that you're insisting on reservation in the private sector? I'm surprised that you're asking me this. Even the Congress party itself today has now come out in this manifesto that they want reservation in the private sector. But isn't that going backwards? What is wrong in that? In a country like developing country like India, when every industry which is now trying to come up is ensuring that he is taking someone else's land and trying to take an old village and trying to end, and they realize that the only market in the world is India and the largest market in the world. And I think sure that we also want need part of the development growth. We are not asking them to do anything free. We are asking them if they qualify. Today in India, everyone is qualified. Most of our people are working in the rest of the world. 
And why can't we ask for reservation in our own country? I think every private sector should look into it. But do you think then you're isolating all those young people who are against reservation per se, whether it's on merit or caste based? See, let me do the India. DMK has been far looking for reservation, not now, from right from early. Because we realize that when it comes to education, the backward people, people who belong to the backward community, the most backward community, the scheduled caste, the scheduled tribe, have been deprived, not for one generation, for several generations. Whereas we are not against any other community. We are saying that in a, in a situation where we want a billion people to be in the same part with the rest of the world, we need to bring certain section of the people which have been deprived. Because you, I mean, we are not talking, say, that giving them 20% uh, depreciation. If you really see, today the education in Tamil Nadu is so competitive. The difference between an SC and ST is only 1.2% to 0.3%. The cutoff today is like, you know what, 99 is 99.1, 99.2, 99.3. It's, it's so competitive. I don't think that you should look into, into a magnifying glass and try to demean anyone. It is a competitive world and people do need from the backward community, especially people from the villages who are still lagging behind. Tomorrow, if you talk about growth, we should not be a country who are extremely rich and extremely have everything and people who do not have nothing. It is not the way we want. We want an equalitarian society which is represented by all. By certain segments saying, oh, evil. the reservation is going to kill me. Come on, be honest. Today in Delhi, they are saying the cutoff was 200, mark, uh, 200 marks. That is center 100. Well, it has come. We have become so competitive. We are not asking that a person with no qualification should be put in. We are saying everyone is qualified. We have to have an equalitarian society. And this is the right uh, step in the right direction. But will development start at home? There are so many family businesses owned by various members of the party itself. See, one thing is, this, I think it's a very good question. In, if, in fact, that you should, when it comes as a rule, everyone will follow. And one thing is, I'm sure that before you ask me this question, you should go find out with the fact that whether all the uh, political parties have done it or not. And you'd be surprised that uh, probably you need reservation the other way. And mm -hmm. all these business done by most of the political party, these only people who really belong to the backward community or most backward class are being given the first priority there. What are your promises for the young people of the state when it comes to job, better security? What are the DMK's promises to the young? See, do, do understand that DMK from 2004 when it was part of the central government has done wonders. In fact, I could say that I could talk for myself, which is a perfect example of what I did made a change. In fact, when I came as uh, when I was the minister, we were able to bring 2,60,000 crores investment to the country and the majority came to Tamil Nadu and especially Chennai. See, we do understand that, I know that more than 6,000 factories came around Chennai. Just imagine 1,000 people, I, I'm saying at ballpark, 1,000 people are employed in this 6,000 factories. Do the maths. That's the kind of employment which was generated here. And we also see it, Tamil DMK has been one of the party which is promoting manufacturing I do remember right from my father's days that when he, we brought in, he brought in Hyundai at the first uh, car manufacturer to Chennai. Today we have all the leading manufacturers, Hyundai's, we have a BMW, we have a Ford, you have a Mitsubishi, you have Mahindra, you have, uh, I think, uh, what is the French car, uh, everyone is here. So, so basically it changes. Today Chennai is the Detroit for India. So this provides a lot of employment. And if you look at this, is during the DMK regime, we are able to bring in like St. Gobain and all the other manufacturers here. And when I was a minister, I was able to bring in Nokia, Samsung, Motorola, Flextronics, Sanmina, and all the uh, real high tech uh, uh, electronic manufacturer company, which really changed the uh, scenario. So you're saying you will try to bring more industries to See, that's the only way we can bring in, uh, we can ensure that our people are employed here. Otherwise, our people will be going to other states or other countries for employment. And India, Tamil Nadu is a uh, state which has got the maximum number of engineering college. So on one side, the manifesto of course talks about job creation and welfare. But the, on the other side, it is really heavy on reservation. Reservation for scheduled cars. You're saying uh, Supreme Court judges should be scheduled cars. There's so much talk about reservation. Why is that balancing act being done? Because they are not there. The reason we are asking for reservation is in any, every sector is because we find that one section of our community or one section of our community is taking dominating the whole factor. Since if it has equal, it, it has been equal, we wouldn't have raised that issue because equality is not being there. It's been dominating by one sector of people.
the other sector people are shown the door. We are asking for it. So it is, the, 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 the scenario has to change. What do you think? The scenario has changed that we, there should be a situation where no one can demand for reservation. That means everyone should be represented. If such a situation is represented, because this is the same talk at the national level, even the parliament also. The parliament are talking about reservation. You talk everywhere, they, you see these people are not even there. What are the percentage of people there? Even the Dalit community is a majority community in the country. And how much are they represented? In, so it is a, say, I think you are opening the Pandora's box for a discussion which can last for hours. I can talk to you for hours. But to understand that if certain people are not there, they are going to ask for it. It is the duty of the government to ensure that everyone is represented. Then alone we are a democracy. And then if we do not do that, then we are not a democracy. We are a dictator. Do we want to be a dictator? Do we want to be dictated by certain media or certain houses which want to post their views and post their ideas? We are not a such a, we are, we are not, see, we can talk to ourselves to be like America, but we are not America. We are still a growing country. And we are, we are, and we are the largest democracy which is still not really democratic as such. We need to bring in people from every sector of life to be part in the process of the decision making and part of the governance. Then alone will our country grow. The other question I would like to ask you is about the issue of Sri Lanka. Now, this time also in the UNHRC, India actually abstained from voting on the US resolution. The DMK gave a statement opposing it. But the problem is, has the Sri Lankan issue merely become lip service? If an opportunity rises, you will again support a next UPA government or go with the Congress. So, has Sri Lanka become an issue of lip service? I think my leaders made it very, very clear that we are very, very disappointed in the role the government of India did. They might have a thousand re reasons to say that, reason, but one day we are happy that the UNHRC resolution has been passed. We are happy that. Now, but, but India abstained. But one thing is this, I am saying is, this, see, the role of India will be questioned in the parliament. Whatever India did, see, when, as, when we get elected and go back, we are not just going to sit there. We are going to raise the issue in the parliament and ensure that we get the proper answers. But at the end of the day, we are happy that the UNHRC resolution has been passed. And, is, and one thing is this, this is one part of the uh, media trying to uh, demine or defa defame the, the Dravidian parties, the people of Tamil, saying that we live service. Unfortunately, we are not able to do that. The reason, the reason we walked out of the VPS, this is a Sri Lankan issue, one of the... No, but you are seen as one of the progressive faces of the DMK. Do you believe, uh, frankly, that this is just a rhetoric now? That there is nothing being actually done on the ground as far as India is concerned see, for see, Sri Lanka? That's the issue which we have raised now, because one thing is we have made it very clear. Whichever party wants to take this issue serious will get the support of DMK. We are going to make it a point because this will be, a, I can't say it now, because this is a talk which we will have amongst our leaders okay. when we start discussing. Because as I said, we are, this time we are going to be very clear. Listen, this is our set of issues. This is what put in the manifesto. We want these issues to be discussed and importance to be given. There should be a common minimum program which, which should include all these. Because you do realize that this will take us to a better understanding and make sure that Tamil Nadu gets the better because see, this is issue burning issue there it's not that because probably when you are the English media doesn't understand the sentiments of the uh, regional uh, parties or regional because you don't go beyond China you don't go into the grassroots to understand okay. you should understand that because basically seeing the Chennai and meeting the so-called media houses they don't go into details people want to brush this under the carpet but this is what is a burning issue which we want to raise and we feel that until unless there's something happening, positive happening in Sri Lanka, people are still living in fences. That's not what we want. Okay, I have two more questions for you. I remember that uh, two elections ago, you were one of those people behind the idea of giving free televisions uh, uh, in Tamil Nadu. But do you think that soft culture, which started from the MGR era, propagated more by the DMK and now taken to a new level by the AI DMK, that sort of brought down the economy of the state and it's, that's not the way to deal with people. I don't think by giving these issues, social upliftment programs, social beneficial program, have brought the states down. Uh, sorry, economy down. The economy is down because of the mismanagement of the state. Unfortunately, the chief minister of Tamil Nadu Jayalita is not managing the affairs of the state properly. If you really you see, they had gone about handling it very, really well. Although they increased the price tariff of electricity, milk, transportation. The state government seems to be doing something else wrong. The state government is trying to enter into every commercial business and trying to subsidize this. That's not what DMK wanted. DMK wanted to do one part because it was quite sad that 
Television was quite a revolution in the country and DMK felt that everyone should have the right to mm -hmm. information, right to television and the dissemination of information has been reached because all the government plans should be known to the public. That was one of the main idea of bringing the televisions to the and it was a, such a big hit and frankly we all know that there is a television in every house. But the like, SOPs never won you an election. See, one thing, we never, we, we never give SOPs for winning election. Do understand that. That's different. Nobody say that that's wrong. We wanted to do something. We wanted to open the uh, uh, arena for saying that everyone had a television. Today, everyone's got a refrigerator. Everyone has got a washing machine. In India, as a country, that basic necessities are becoming impossibilities for the poor. As he said, as long as in a state, when people have and people have not, it is the duty of the government to ensure there are less and less of have nots. And as long as there are have nots, people do not have it. It's the duty of any state government to look into it. But running a government, when DMK was there, there was no economic issues, growth was there. We opened the doors for industries to come in. Unfortunately, we feel that the state present state government under Jayalalitha has not opened the doors for any industries. Mere announcements that are not going to bring in development. When, when Kalangaru Karnani was the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, there were so many industries come because the environment was friendly, because the government was non corrupt. It opened the doors and said, what if we want industries, we want employment. That's what we wanted. Growth took place. That's the reason they were so a uh, line for such industries to come. The last three years, can you name one industry which has come into uh, Tamil Nadu? They're scared. Because first of all, a chief minister should be approachable. She should meet the industries. She has not been meeting the industries. There's a huge power problem. She is rather solving the problem. She's cursing the opposition for the last three years. You can curse them for the first year. For three years, there's nothing has happened. And I'm, you know, I'm told that after the elections, the power sh uh, sh shortage is going to increase. Even in Chennai, which is now experiencing two hours of power cut, is going to six hours. And the uh, rural areas, there's only 10 to 12 hours of power cut. Mm -hmm. All the uh, commercial establishments in, in Chennai are facing a six hour power uh, shortage. And basically, we are scared which industry will come. See, DMK was able to provide the power situation. We power was bought from other states. Because you need a long term planning. Because in the grid, you can't ask for one month. You should ask for one year or two years. Then alone will you get a space in the grid. It's so unfortunate the state government has not bothered. Even today, if you realize, I know your first interview was with me in, uh, when I was uh, standing for election in 2004. You realize that we are going through a severe water shortage. That time, in our manifesto, we said we'll bring in a permanent solution for the water problem in Tamil Nadu. Today, the Viranam pipes are dry. No water is coming from Krishna water from Andhra. The, uh, all the uh, water uh, bodies around Chennai are dry. How are you getting water? It's a deuce, two desalination plants put by DMK. Remember that we said 1,000 crores from which uh, part of the common minimum from which we brought, which is what's feeding in Chennai with the water. People do not even know the difference between the water and the desalination water. See, these steps have to take. It's duty of every government to take. We did it. When the government sleeps and slumbers, and now she is nurturing the uh, dream of becoming the prime minister, she has neglected the state. When a chief minister of a state is going on a holiday in our uh, hill station for months together and neglect, when chief minister of state doesn't want to even travel by road, See, we say, please bring industry to every village. Please bring industry to every district of Tamil Nadu. What is my chief minister, Jalita, doing? She's bringing helipad to every <laughs> district. Every pad to helipad to. Who wants that? We want help votes. Where public can go. It's not for one individual. The problem what's happening is it's become a melodramatic, megalomaniac. See, that she, whatever she does is right. Everything is flopping. Money, public money is used to bloat her ego but not to benefit the people. This is what we want to change. I feel that when we are an opportunity, when we were in 2004, even though we are not in power, we were able to bring a remarkable change in the mindset of people and bring in industries to Tamil Nadu. We feel that at the end of the day, industrialization will bring in development and employment. And moment people are employed, that alone generates the economy. The economy gets boosted. And the economy will build up. But we are not for free shop. Free, we see certain things we have to do. When people do not have it, we have to do it. That's what we want to do. My last question. Though AIDMK may be battling income, anti-incumbency, the DMK over the last few years has sort of become synonymous to corruption. Even this year, the news was that A Raja got, no, got a seat again. 
there are cases against you kanimuri a raja will that impression that's here to stay so how how, how are you going to explain that see i think a raja was a victim i don't think there are no case no cases against me Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, okay. There, yeah. There's no cases. The investigation. No, there's an FIR. But let's be there. And one thing is, if uh, there's a politician, every politician in India, if they perform, there's a group which tries to target them and ensures the only way to stifle their growth is filing a case on them or trying to put a huge blame on them and ensure that it happens. And Frank, unfortunately, I was too popular and I was doing too good for my state. And I'm sure that a lot, uh, everyone ganged up and tried to put a, but I'm sure that I'm ready to face it. Tell me a politician doesn't have a case. And, Ray, and the Indian law is very, very clear in case of Mr. Yeraja. He has said he's innocent. And if he's given a chance to prove it, he's, he's fighting the court. He's not running away like the chief minister of Jayalitha. If the same question I wish, Danya, you had asked Jayalitha. I will, if I get an opportunity. Yeah, she'll slice you. <laughs> but the reason is, you understand that. Yeraja is not running away. He's not been sent. He's not been sentenced. He's, he's, he's a trial. It doesn't mean a mere accusation. The person is condemned to death. You can't do that. Let's be fair. The Indian law says a person is innocent until proven guilty. And Ain Sri Raja as God is trying to fight his case. And I wish him well that I'm sure he'll come out clean. But we have to wait for the process. And he's, and DMK says that he supports it because mere because they want to malign DMK. DMK Raja is who is they? They have opposition. Okay. The opposition wants to But one thing, Mr. Ayaraj, I think the people are going to vote. End of the day, it's the people's decision. When people decide that Mr. Ayaraj is not the corrupt, they will vote for him as member of parliament. I think it's a message for those people who try to unnecessarily frame him and fix him up. Because I'm sure the media has done a major role in trying to fix Mr. Ayaraj, trying to blow it out of proportion. Where is the 176,000 crores? Everyone wants to know, where is it? It's a fictitious amount. Try, try, and trying to put the blame on DMK. Mr. Rehaja is not single to be able to find. It's a, it's a fictitious amount. People have forgotten that when today nearly 85% of Indians have cell phones. Because, they, because it was a service. It was a service to bring in telephone to the villages. That's what was Mr. Raja was doing. People are now trying to discredit DMK because DMK ministers brought in the telecom re mobile revolution to the country. What others could not do? Pe ministers of DMK, including me and Raja, brought in from 1 rupee to 25 paisa is the call. We brought it in. And what others want to do? They don't want the credit of the mobile revolution or the broadband revolution or what is happening in the country to be credited to DMK. So they are trying to discredit us. And we are fighting it. And this is how it happens. Okay, so let and, the and, fight. And, and this time I would say, today is a case going on. It is official that they come and say Jayalitha's crore, she got a rupee, one rupee salary mm -hmm. and her net worth is 5,000 crores. How did she make the money? She is, uh, see, what is, what was it? see how they smartly put the ball in our court and try to do it. End of the day, let me say, DMK is against corruption in any kind. Unfortunately, we have been framed and most of the media went all, all, about, all, all about to try to fix us. We'll come out clean. We are ready to fight it and we'll prove. And again, I reiterate, there is no case against me. And if there, a, if there is a case, I'm ready to prove myself and come out clean. Okay. Thank you very much for joining Young Thank and you. Digital.